Hello and welcome to section 4, Installing VMware Horizon. So what are you going to learn in this section? In this section we're going to start by looking at the configuration requirements for the server that is going to have the Horizon View Connection Server software installed on it. Next, we're going to take a quick overview of the View Administrator and also the new Horizon console. We will finish the section by installing a replica server and also a security server. So let's move on to the first part of this video and look at installing the connection server software. But before we do, we're just going to remind ourselves of the prerequisites that we'll need for this virtual machine to have. So the connection server needs to be built with the following configuration. It will need to be running server 2008, 2012, 2016, have four virtual CPUs, a one gig network card, a minimum of 10 gig of RAM, and 60 gig of disk space for the software to actually sit in. So now we're going to install our first connection server. And to do this, we've logged on to the desktop of the server that's going to host the connection server role. So here is the desktop of that particular server. And then we have navigated to the installation media, which in our case is on our network shared folder that's on our domain controller in the folder called software folder. And we need to scroll down until we find VMware Horizon Connection Server x86 underscore 64. Then we see the version of Horizon and then the build number. So we double click to launch the installer application. Then we see the open file security warning. We just click run, just minimize the Windows Explorer. And now you can see we are preparing the VMware Horizon 7 Connection Server for installation, our first connection server. So here we see the welcome to the installation wizard for VMware Horizon 7 connection server. So here we click next. And the first screen we see is our license agreement. So we need to accept the terms. So click the radio button to accept the terms in the license agreement and then click next to continue. The next screen is the destination folder. So where are the installation files going to be copied to on this server? So the default path is program files, VMware, VMware view and server. If you want to change that, you can. So it's literally hit the button there and then choose where you want to install those files. For this example, we will go with the default path. So we'll click next to continue. And now we have our installation options. As we said, the connection server performs many roles. So there's a standard server, replica, security and enrollment server. So we need to pick the appropriate role from the box here. So as this is our first connection server, it's just the standard server. So we will select that from the box. Then we have a tick box to the right that says install HTML access. So do we want our end users to be able to connect to their desktops from a browser? So we can tick yes or no. So that'll install the HTML access software. This will perform a full install. And then we need to choose what version of IP we're going to use. So we can choose IP version 4 or IP version 6. One thing to be aware of, we can't mix and match between the view components. So if we go for IP version 4 for our first connection server here, then any subsequent connection server roles would also need to be IP version 4. So if we installed a replica server or security server or enrollment server, they would also need to be on IP version 4. So we'll select that. And we go for next to continue. And now we see our data recovery password box. So we need to enter a password for our data recovery. The data in this case is the contents of the Adam database. So this is storing the details of our users, the desktop pools they're entitled to, and all the information stored within view. So we just enter a password here. And then go to the re-enter password box and type that password again. And then optionally, we could put a password reminder in there. If you've got the password all typed in, you can click next to continue. And now we see our firewall configuration screen. So this will automatically configure the Windows firewall to allow traffic in and out. So specific ports for Horizon, so PC over IP 4172. So we ensure that that port's open. Maybe it's 8443 if we're doing HTTPS and we're doing Blast, maybe port 80. If we click the radio button to configure that, Horizon will go away and make sure all of those ports are open. If you don't, then you may have some issues later on. So we recommend you do that now. Next to continue. 
And now we have our initial Horizon 7 administrator. So who's going to manage this Horizon environment? So we need to specify the domain user, or it could be a domain group, or a specific user account that you set up that's going to manage the Horizon environment. So we could authorize the local admins group, or in this case, we're going to actually use the domain users. So this could be managed in an enterprise type environment. So note that you need to add the domain name, slash, and then the username in that particular format. So in this example, we're going to go with our, our PVO lab domain, and we're going to use the administrator account. But you may have a separate view admin account, or however you've set that up, if there's specific Horizon administrators you want to add. Next to continue, now we have the user experience improvement program. Do you want to join this? It's just a way of VMware collecting statistical information. It's not a licensing check. So we've joined that many times, so we're going to not join it this time. So we check the box and then click next to continue. And now we see the ready to install the program. So quick summary here, we're just going to basically install Horizon 7 connection server in that particular path location. And if you're happy, we can click install and the installation will start. So we'll see copying of new files, updating component registrations, continue with the copying of the files. We'll see the services being launched. You will see here the icon has appeared, which is a shortcut to the view admin console. Now we're building and creating the database. So the Adam database where we're going to store all our user information, desktop pool information, and who has what desktops. And we've now completed the install. So here we see our installer complete screen. So the installer has successfully installed Horizon 7, the connection server. The next steps here is show the documentation. So if you check the box, when you click finish, it will launch the documentation screen. We don't need to do that on here. So if you're happy, that's all done. And we can click finish. And we've now completed the installation of our first connection server. And the next steps will be to complete the initial configuration task which we will do in the next video.